Hi. Um, okay, so today is my last day of the third month of my treatment. Um, and overall, I think I'm pretty happy um, with how things are going. I think uh, I've seen a lot of improvement already uh, on certain symptoms that are very important. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and today is also day four of being on 300 milligrams of Doxy, um, which is pretty intense. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely getting the anxiety like I expected, um, but so far so good in terms of me being able to handle it. Um, after last video, um, that's when it started really creeping up. That was that moment where I thought, oh, okay, I need to, I need to deal with this. And so I've been concentrating a lot of my efforts in the last two days and today I will as well, um, to try to be as calm as possible, try to be as calm as possible, do things. Um, like re double my efforts that I usually do to uh, stay um, kind of focused on the positive and, and, and kind of uh, open and loving and all that whatever I need to do to <laughs> to keep taking good care of myself um, and maybe I'll, I in, in order to explain um, maybe a bit what how this anxiety works because um, it's really something that I want to explain it. I know it's hard to understand maybe like what part do I control? What part do I not control? Like how does that work? You know? Um, and so I'll say maybe a bit what happened yesterday. Um, a friend of mine um, who's recording some songs right now that for an old scouts camp we used to do and we still do. Long story. Um, invited me to come sing a song that we uh, were singing together about eight years ago at a camp that we, we ran together. Um, and that was amazing and I was so 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 happy that I was able to do it because a few weeks ago I wouldn't have been able to do it um, and um, she reached out to me and was like you know maybe you feel well enough now and I was like really really happy and so I went there was two friends of mine two good friends of mine and it was everything was great uh, we had super a lot of fun everything sounded beautiful we talked a lot uh, I caught up on their lives they caught up on like my illness and all that so it was amazing um, and I was so happy to do it and just like, it was a beautiful moment for me, really. The moment I stepped out of the house, my brain and my anxiety kicked in because while I'm there, I need to be interacting. And so I was quite anxious, but kind of positive and I'm around people. And then the moment I get out, my brain starts going over everything that was said and tries to find um, what I said wrong. Uh, or I said something and it sounded a certain way and I didn't pr I didn't nuance it with something else and they're gonna think that it's that so a lot about my illness I feel that way where there are so many details with the illness that you can never really put it all into one conversation and then my and the thing is is that it becomes an obsessive thing um, it's very very hard to stop and it's it's just an automatic uh, like they're called automatic ne negative thoughts ants and that's exactly what it is it's just these ants buzzing in my head, buzzing in my head, and I don't want to be thinking any of it. Like, I had a great time. I know life's not perfect. Conversations aren't perfect. You don't always get to say everything you want, and I'm not looking for perfection, um, but my anxious brain is and will make me feel like, I'm a, like I did something horribly wrong unless I go over everything and find all those spots um, of the, the weak spots, let's say. So it's really exhausting, and so what gets really, really tiring with this anxiety uh, it's not so much that I eventually believe the thoughts because really at this point I don't um, Yeah, I don't <laughs> period What gets really tiring is the fight the constant fight of putting those thoughts away so when um, when we got home with Jan after he picked me up um, I was telling him all about it and I was like all excited and then as I was even telling him all the positive that was things that happened in my brain the background noise was going and it was picking up you know, the things that weren't perfect, things that were bad, things... And the problem with that is that I, I get a very physical sensation from it. So um, I'm sure people that have Lyme disease or other sorts of um, body pain issues and tension, all that ha can relate to that. The emotions are just so intense on your body when you're in such a state. Or, um, and so it isn't just that you have annoying thoughts and you're fighting them, but those thoughts are giving you or giving you the body sensations and so it's like every fiber of your being is saying it is correct to be worrying about the fact that um, you know you missed out on a detail or somebody didn't seem to get something or didn't understand like 
re really ridiculous um, details like that. So um, sometimes I have this meter <laughs> where I think back at um, Yan and I's wedding that happened uh, an, a year and a half ago. And it was, uh, the wedding was a really great uh, experience. It was, you know, the most beautiful day of my life, I'm sure, uh, based on the fact that I just never received so much love in my life. But in the same time, it was very stressful and, you know, some things went wrong. I mean, because they always do. And so I have like a love-hate relationship with that memory. And when I'm highly anxious and I think back of the wedding, my, right away, I... Um, I think just of all the negative stuff and when I know that I'm calmer and I think back of the wedding then I remember like just the love and how great it was and how, how how beautiful an experience it was and so that's a bit of like I can use that as a gauge a bit to see what mood I'm in or how much anxiety I have um, because sometimes it's hard to tell um, I don't even know myself sometimes I'm sitting you know uh, by myself and I think I'm calmer than I am and Jan comes in and says you know a questionable joke and all of a sudden I'm you know, freaking out about something and then I need to just breathe, calm down and realize, okay, so this is what's going on now and this is how we have to deal with it. So as I was saying, when we came back yesterday, jumping from idea to idea, <laughs> um, when we came back yesterday, I was telling Jan all about it, going back and then Jan listened to me, he was very kind and then he said, babe, I think you should go change and I think we're, we should do some yoga. And I didn't want to, that's the thing. An anxious brain does not want to calm down. Uh, it wants to keep feeding you those ants and it wants to just, your body gets energized with that. It's like um, you're, getting, you're getting something out of it. It's a, like, a, like a bit of a, like addiction or something. I'm sure there's a complex slash simple brain mechanism to explain this. Um, and the good thing is, is that after all these years, we have an understanding with Yen and we kind of have worked a lot of these things out. And so when I'm in an anxious state, um, Yan will tell me, like, I think it's a good idea to yoga, do yoga and I will respect that um, because I need to I need to trust him that he knows at that moment what's best for me, which is kind of messed up. And that's what the issue is with this um, whole anxiety thing and the fact that there's psychological effects to this infection is that um, you're not always on your own side because um, you're polluted, man. Your synapses, synapses are polluted and your brain's polluted and your body's sick. And, um, and yeah, it is what it is. It takes a lot of support from those around you. Um, so yeah, I hope this gives you a better understanding um, of how that works. I mean, it's just one example. Um, of one event but that's kind of what happens a lot and it's always self like I never I don't get much anxiety externally it's all about like self um, self deprecation or well not deprecation but uh, you know what I mean <laughs> and it turns inward the the, the the bad stuff turns inward 